That's when you thought the sunfish couldn't get any more tragic. We arrive at the part of our story I like to call the Parasite Grand Hotel. If the sunfish is a biological failure in motion, its skin is a five-star, all-inclusive resort for every disgusting freeloader in the ocean. Forget a mint on the pillow. These guests get a permanent buffet of skin, mucus, and whatever else they can latch onto. The sunfish isn't just an animal. It's a mobile, all-you-can-eat seafood platter for things that would make a horror movie director blush. Scientists have cataloged over 50 different species of parasites that call the sunfish home. And we're not talking about a few unwelcome guests. We're talking about a full-blown infestation on a biblical scale. On the outside, you've got copepods, which are like tiny, grotesque shrimp burrowing into their skin. You have monstrous flatworms clinging on for dear life. Barnacles set up entire apartment complexes on their fins. But it doesn't stop there. Oh no, the party continues on the They have parasitic worms living in their digestive tract, their gills, even their flesh. It's a writhing, squirming metropolis of misery. And here's the kicker, the absolute cherry on top of this Sunday of suffering. Even the parasites have parasites. This is a real biological phenomenon called hyperparasitism, and the sunfish is its poster child. Imagine a fat, happy copepod latched onto the sunfish's eyeball. Well, that copepod is probably hosting its own little family of even smaller, even more disgusting protozoans. It's a Russian nesting doll of pure, unadulterated horror, a fractal pattern of freeloading, parasites on parasites, on a fish that can barely swim straight. You couldn't write a more pathetic existence.